What is going on ladies and gents, it's your boy Lamsey back again with another Transfer Talk episode. Now I do apologise that I didn't upload yesterday, I was a little bit busy, got a little bit sidetracked, I got some Lamsey Legends coming out in the next couple of weeks, so fingers crossed that we can get that one sorted. But obviously, like I have said in previous videos, I'll try and bring them to you every week. Can't be consistent on each day, but I'll uh, see what I can do from here. But anyway, we'll go straight into it today. So the first transfer rumor that I've seen is Willian going over to Manchester United. Now, obviously starting off with the one-star ratings. Now, I can't really see this one happening too much, obviously, because Willian's such a strike force in Chelsea's lineup. He is in and out at the moment due to Pedro playing really, really out of his skin at the moment. But... We all know he's a fan favourite at the bridge, and he's scoring still a few goals, assisting quite a few goals, and there's a key part to our play. Now, I can't really see this one happening too much, only because Chelsea are going to be playing Champions League football next year. So if Chelsea are looking to progress really high in the Champions League next year, we're going to need the best possible depth in our team, because we'll be playing, you know, three games in nine days. So we don't really want that to sort of be an issue for us because our depth is usually pretty good but Willian is uh, rated around 32 million euros it is told that Mourinho does want him back in his squad to have him go over to Manchester United would be a little bit of an issue he is 28 turning on 29 earlier uh, later on in the season in August I do believe but I can't really see this one happening too much maybe not this year but maybe in a couple years time I think Chelsea are going to try and keep their hands on him now, staying on topic of Manchester United, now they want to nick another player from the Chelsea squad. Now, we can't really blame Mourinho because he did bring in this player. It is Cesc Fabregas himself. Now, obviously, he's been in and out of this squad as well this season, but he has been a very, very influential player to our team this season. No matter when he comes on, he always makes an impact, and he's always assisting goals, and, he was, and he's always scoring them as well. But... To see Cesc Fabregas leave, it's been on topic for the last, you know, few months. It's even it was even a topic in the January transfer window where he was linked to AC Milan, but which did fall through. But I can't see Cesc Fabregas moving either. Now, due to the reason is I did apparently hear that he wanted to stay at Chelsea for the rest of his career. Now, obviously, when players are getting on in their career, they move on to you know the MLS or China now. But I can't really see. Cesc Fabregas moving there just yet. Whether he'll stay at Chelsea, I can't really tell, but he's definitely a fan favourite, and I can't really see him moving over too much, but anything is possible. He is 29, so he is starting to get a little bit older, but apparently the main key thing that I've seen is that apparently he's already reached his verbal agreement. So whether that's the right thing or not, we'll have to find out. But, fingers crossed for Chelsea fans is that he doesn't leave, but you Manchester United fans would be loving life if he had Cesc Fabregas and Juan Mata playing in the central midfield role. Moving out of Old Trafford is David De Gea to go over to the Bernabeu to go and play for Real Madrid. Now, it has been an ongoing thing for Real Madrid to try and find a top quality goalkeeper for the last few seasons. To be honest, Keylor Navas is an actual beast. He's showing what he's worth, he's still quite young. But so is David De Gea, and David De Gea still has a lot of potential to grow, because obviously goalkeepers do age um, and retire at around late 30s to even into their 40s these days. These days, but the topic is that for him to go over there, Real Madrid are also offering 50 million and James Rodriguez. Now, James is basically sitting on the bench for most games these days. Zidane doesn't see too much of his, uh, you know, performances into the starting lineup. I can't really see. Hum is basically breaking that for the rest of the season. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But to see David De Gea go over to Real Madrid, I can possibly see it happening. But to see Hummers go over there might be a little bit of an issue. But if Man United were smart, I would keep David De Gea because it is really hard to find good goalkeepers these days that are that are really, really... Their fucking stats are crazy. And he's just broken another record for the Premier League uh, with clean sheets, so hats off to him. And it is hard to find a really good goalkeeper, so to see him move over there would be a little bit of an ask, but you never know what can happen. Real Madrid have all the money in the world. Now, finally, moving away from Manchester United and going down the land is Tottenham. Now, they are linked to Bruma, who is the left mid Portuguese player who does play for Galatasaray. Now, this one is a little bit of a controversial transfer. Now, there are two articles. One does state 
that he will be on his way to White Hart Lane at the end of the season for 20 million euros. And then another one states that Galatasaray have just cancelled out any uh, transfer for Bruma. Now, it's a little bit controversial either or, but to see Bruma in the Premier League would be pretty sick. Tottenham do need a little bit more depth considering that they will be playing Champions League football next year. And to see that sort of playmaker in the Spurs team would make them even more of a threat. So to see this one happen, I could possibly see this one happen. But obviously three star ratings for this one. Now staying in the vicinity of London, we've got Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain linked to Liverpool. Now we all know what Liverpool's like with their English players. They always want them to come in and out of the team. But this one could be a possibility now. Alex Oxlade Chamberlain has so much potential, like he is an absolute beast. Now we have seen him play in the centre defensive midfield role uh, through stages uh, of the season. Now to see him move over to Liverpool would probably be a better move for him. Now obviously that Arsenal aren't really playing him too much and the only times that he's going to be playing is to replace other players around him. Now he isn't a strong starter at Arsenal but he would definitely be a starter at Liverpool. Now I know that they've got Mane but Liverpool actually might use him in a centre defensive midfield uh, role with Emre Chan. Now that would be absolutely dope with Coutinho playing in front of them. Now uh, if Liverpool do get their hands on Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain it would be crazy and Liverpool would even look more and more like a threat. But we all know what Liverpool's like, they're up and down at the moment. But to see this one happen would be pretty sick for Liverpool fans. Let me know what you guys think. Now, I do apologise, we are staying around London here again. We've got Chelsea this time, but we've got the 19-year-old Yuri T. Elements, who is linked to Chelsea. Now, this would be a pretty sick transfer. He is only 19 years of age, so he's still got a lot of growth to do. But Chelsea are eager to beat Manchester United to the 25 million signing of T. Elements. Now, that would be absolutely sick, especially if Cesc Fabregas and Willian are looking to exit, as well as Diego Costa as well. So, Chelsea are going to have a little bit of a busy transfer window uh, in the summer, winter for us. But to see whether this one will happen or not would be pretty sick to see. Now, he has scored 18 goals in all competitions this season for Anderlecht. Uh, considering in comparison to his 7 goals and 45 as well last season. So obviously Anderlecht is still in the Europa League as well with a return leg to go to Old Trafford. So, so we'll never know what, what could happen there. But he's also started a game for Belgium as well in the, the full side, the full not under 21s or anything like that. Like he's played for Belgium. So to see this one happen or not would be pretty crazy. You never know what can happen. So what, what will Chelsea do? What my strong opinion would be, if Chelsea do beat Manchester United to T. Elements, I think they'll just loan him out. Then he'll get really good, then we'll sell him off for like 50 mil to some other team. So, But you never know what can happen. Conte is one of those play, one of those managers that if he likes someone, he'll play them. So you never know what can happen there. Over to Manchester City. Now we do have the big Ivorian beast, Yaya Toure which is linked to a move over to Inter Milan. Now, there's been a lot of uh, speculation ever since Guardiola has uh, signed over at Man City. Now, obviously, that Yaya Toure and Pep Guardiola don't really see eye to eye, but Yaya Toure has played quite a few games uh, in the second half of the season under Guardiola, but he is linked to Inter Milan, and Inter Milan have shown interest in quite some time for Yaya Toure so whether his contract is up at the end of the season or not I can't really see Yaya Toure moving on just yet but if he was given a big enough role in another team he is 33 so he'd, he'd definitely want to still start and the money would have to be definitely good because he is an icon at Manchester City but to see him move over I'd still give a three star rating. Now we've got Marco Verratti, who is PSG centre mid, going over to Bayern Munich. Now, there's been a lot of rumours since the start of the season that Verratti has been wanting an exit. Now, he hasn't been playing too much for PSG this season. His, his starting appearances hasn't been as high as what he'd like it to be. And Bayern Munich would definitely be after another centre mid now. In that topic, now we've got Renato Sanchez as well, so in in that same position I'm talking about. Now, 
Renato Sanchez has not played very much at all. He was the golden boy for 2016, had an amazing Euros with Portugal, and he's barely played. He's done nothing all season, hasn't even got an in-form card on FIFA. But whether Bayern Munich will want to keep uh, Sanchez will be another story, because if they do keep Sanchez, then Verratti's place may be a little bit limited, because they are sort of... You know, they got Thiago as well in there. So whether it'll happen or not will be pretty crazy. Verratti might fit straight into that team, but he is Italian, so he knows how to pass the ball, and there are a lot of players at Munich who just like to take it on themselves. So to whether to see this one happen or not uh, will be pretty crazy to see, but you never know what can happen. Money talks. Now, on the second last transfer rumor that I have seen across the internet over the last couple of weeks is Saeed Kolasinac. Now, he is on a free transfer at the end of the season. Now, Arsenal are definitely going to need some reinforcements to come into the team because they've been absolutely shite. And left-back role, Nacho Monreal hasn't been too great, and Kieran Gibbs isn't the greatest of replacements either. I think Kieran Gibbs would probably be a better left-back, but who's to say? Wenger in, Wenger out. Who cares right now? It's just the team has to perform, and... Replacements need to be made. Now, I think this would be a perfect transfer because he's definitely on a free, so they wouldn't be losing out at all. And I can definitely see this one happening because the Premier League is such a prestigious league to play in, especially compared to the Bundesliga. And to see um, Kohler in that, in that Arsenal team would probably buffen that up a lot. So to see this one happening, I can see this one happening around 75%. So definitely a four-star rating, guys. Now, moving on to the last transfer rumor of this week's episode. Now, we've got Gerard de la Feu, who is now linked away from AC Milan, which he is on loan at, back to Barcelona. Now, that's pretty fucking crazy. Now, obviously, his season starter at Everton was pretty poor, but ever since he's moved over to Milan, he's made a lot more of an impact. And now Barcelona want him back. So obviously they're going to have to not go through AC Milan. They're going to have to go through Everton. Now if Barcelona wants a player back, they'll get him back. Now Gerard de la Feu isn't the greatest of players. He's a fucking ball hog. I'm not going to lie. But he's got a lot of skill. His dribbling is absolutely minto presto. So to see him going back over to Barcelona would be pretty crazy. But I've also heard in the press as well that Messi is saying to Barcelona why... Um, we don't really need him. Do we need him? I can't really see him moving back over to Barcelona because he will get no game time at all. There are so many players that can play in that position at Barcelona. It is ridiculous. And their attacking presence is good enough as it is. So, why? They've got Messi, Neymar, Suarez, their, their front three. And they've got Arda Turan. And they've got Rafinha that can play attacking as well. So, to see Dale Lafay move back over there... I can't really see it happening too much, but if he wants trophies and medals, just go for it, Dale Faye, go for it. I wouldn't blame you. But anyway, guys, that is it for this week's episode. I do apologize once again that I didn't upload yesterday, but I will definitely bring you guys another episode next week. Now, I've got some special content coming out soon, so please do say, stay tuned. Uh, but other than that, guys, please do say, stay subscribed. Please do like the video, share the shit out of it, comment what you guys think, and I shall see you guys on the next video. Catch you later.